اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمده و نسلی علی رسول الكریم سبحان رب کرب العزت اما یاسفون السلام علی المرسلین والحمد للہ رب العالمین ان اللہ ملائکاتو یسلون علی النبی یا ایو اللہ دین آمنو صلو علیہ وسلم تسلیم صدق اللہ علیہ وسلم Dear all, As-salamu alaykum. I hope all of you are in good shape and taking good care of your elders. Hope all the family elders are they are, they are properly vaccinated. And secondly, I congratulate your class. You have given very good result in second year MBBS. And it is seen after a long time. And I hope you will <coughs> work regularly. You will give good attendance. And by the grace of Allah, you will also be <coughs> will give good result in the future. Well, after that, coming to our pharmacology, you know you have been taught about drugs acting on autonomic nervous system and introduction of the autonomic nervous system. It is, it is taught in detail by Professor Saeed Anbar Saab and I have gone through his lectures. So at good length it has been taught. While going through all those lectures you will find it easier to follow the coming literature. And out of that, part of that, which is to be covered today, it, it is about the, those drugs which have direct effect on the cholinergic receptors. So the topic is direct acting cholinomimetic. All of you should have proper pen and one notebook so that additional information you can note. And you may be asked about those additional points, which are not available here in the slides. So here you see the direct acting cholinomimetic. You well understand what is mimic, I mean, re resembling the, that has similarity with the cholinergic system. These drugs are also known as Parasympathomimetic, note down, parasympathomimetics, drugs, parasympathomimetics. They are also known as cholinoceptor activating drugs, note down. These things may not be available in your, in one book. Cholinoceptor activating drugs, so note down, so whenever there is stimulation of parasympathetic system, but the effects will appear. So these drugs will show those effects. Cholinomimetic. I mean, the effect is like the, that of acetylcholine. All of you, uh, I hope you are all familiar with acetylcholine. So we come to the next slide. What you should know at the end of this lecture. So you have to, you have to mention, enumerate. Enumerate means just give number, one, two, three, four, five, like that. Enumerate cholino, cholinergic receptors. You are all familiar with muscarinic receptors, nicotinic receptors, and there is further division of those muscarine and cholinergic, muscarine receptors. Mm -hmm. Nicotinic receptors. Uh, further division is there. I'll show you in the coming <coughs> slides. Then their location is something very, very important. You have to go through it again and again. Write, write on so the, the these things remain in your mind. Their location and how the effect is. How the effect is. Uh, I mean, the, the effect appears, so signaling mechanism. You have got, 
have been taught about signaling mechanism, various how the drugs act, what are the signaling mechanism. So then the next thing, what you are supposed to know, uh, you should classify direct acting cholinomimetics. Direct acting means they have direct effect on the muscarinic receptor. They have direct effect on the nicotinic. So you have to classify. So for next one, the pharmacological actions of direct acting cholinomimetics on different body organ systems. So what will be the effect on eye, say, effect on the heart, GIT, just like that, you should know. And the next thing what you are supposed to know, uh, again, and let's start enumerate the clinical indication. What are the uses? Where are these drugs uses? Clinical indication. What is the, th the therapeutic indications? And the toxicity. As you know, acetylcholine, it, if it has got effects on various organs. At certain places, these are beneficial, while at other places, uh, they, they are not required effects. So selectivity is very important, not zone. Selectivity, specificity, selectivity is something very, very important. Well, the next slide, it is, I mean, you have go through, you have go, you go through the previous literature uh, taught at good length by your professor, <coughs> Said Anversal. Synthesis, storage, and release of acetylcholine. Very important. You have to draw the picture and how the acetylcholine that is synthesized and that is stored at, at the cholinergic terminals and how is it released and what happens later on. So, number next. This diagram. All of you should draw it again and again so that a brief picture is there in your mind. So just go through it. It has already been shown by our <coughs> colleague. How the acetylcholine is being formed, how is it stored in the vesicle, then it is released, there are exotisos. <clears throat> exocytosis so it's re releasing and then metabolizing acting on the receptor cholino receptors and here you see the calcium is required for the release of this acetyl not only the acetylcholine is with there are also ATPs and there is also P then next one these are the different sites and different receptors and how they, the final action is there and then the second messenger, which of the second messengers are being produced and what would be the effect. Say M1, M1, you should also know the location. So they act through G protein. You are familiar with G protein coupling and with the M1, what will happen? IP3 that will increase and DAG cascade that will increase. Then F2 receptors. M1 normally known as neural. neural. M2 receptors, they are known as generally cardiac. So they also act through G protein, G I. So what happens? the cyclic AMP synthesis that will decrease. When the cyclic AMP increase, heart rate will increase. But cyclic AMP, that, that will, I mean, that synthesis will go down, the heart rate will go down. With the parasympathomimetic drug, is there is overactivation of the parasympathetic system. So there may be heart block. And after that, that in the receptor types, M3, so 
these M3 at various places at, at various uh, they have got stimulatory effect. Here the G protein is the GQ. Again IP3 that increases and that cascat increases. M4, M5, they are also given over here. M5, so the G protein coupling is there and there is GI. G protein is GI. Cyclic MPD decreases. With M5, G protein over here is GQ. IP3 level increases in diagonal. These are the muscarinic receptors subtypes. So what protein, how they act, and what would be the second messenger? Then after that, muscarinic receptors, you know, acetylcholine, and it also acts on the nicotinic receptors. And where lie the nicotinic receptor? For the division of nicotinic receptors is there. One is N or NM. M over here means at uh, muscular level, at the motor end plate. So G protein is not involved over here, you see, NM. At motor and neuromuscular junction, G protein is involved. It is the sodium potassium depolarizing current. It is the sodium potassium which is affected, depolarizing current. And NN. These are the nicotinic receptors at autonomic anglia. Generally autonomic, they are also present at other sites. So in the autonomic ganglia, the receptors are nicotinic, NN. So the posterior receptor mechanism is through the uh, stimulation or well, by the effect on the sodium potassium depolarizing current. Sodium potassium depolarizing current. Next. Again, same type of receptor subdivision is given over here, and it is about the location. You have, you must go through this slide right with your hand so that it becomes part of your mind. So the M1 location given over here is the nerves. And very another important clinical site is the gastric parietal cells. Gastric parietal cells, how you know the, what the parietal cells they do. So if the activity of parietal cells, you know HCL is being produced. That, that is to be inhibited, so HCL production you can control with the M1 receptor. No down. It is present in nerves and present in gastric parietal cells. Then M2. Already you have been told about it. Also known as cardiac M2 receptors. So main sites are the heart, nerves, and smooth muscles. Heart is mainly, you know, if there, there will be activation of M2 receptors. The heart will slow down the lower stimulation of this M2, there may be heart block. These M2 receptors are also present now. They are also present. You know the, where lie the smooth muscles, smooth muscles. M3. So they are also known as glandular. I mean, the different glands. They, by stimulation of the, the glandular secretions, uh, they will increase. So wherever the glands are there, lacrimal, maybe lacrimal gland, uh, maybe nasopharyngeal, like that. At other size glands, wherever they are present, so the secretion will increase. M3 receptors, they are also present at smooth muscle like that of GIT, respiration. The M3 also present in the endothelium. M3. There is vasodilation, endothelium. M4 are in the CNS M5. Again, other NM, you have been told earlier, NM means the muscle type nicotinic receptor. Nicotinic means, and then you know, you might have heard about nicotine, that is, I mean, obtained 
a natural glide and in small dose if given that will have effect at this very size the neuromuscular junction at the motor and plate and plate receptors so the location given is in the skeletal muscle and the neuromuscular junction the nn these are the i and you will be told that in the autonomic ganglia these are neuronal type uh, they are present in the autonomic ganglia so the location in the cns in the post ganglionic cell body and the dendrites Polynomimetic again, parasympathomimetic. These are the different synonyms. Polynomic receptors activating drugs. Parasympathomimetic, parasympathomimetic, polynomimetic. These are synonyms. You should be familiar. Polynomimetic, poly also known as cholinergic agonists and parasympathomimetics. Same thing repeated over here. it means the drug they act like acetylcholine sympathomimetic activation of parasympathetic system so the what would be the effect if the parasympathetic system is stimulated the those drugs which act like acetylcholine so they are known as cholinergic agonists then acetylcholine receptors you know and muscarine and nicotine they are stimulated my mac mean the effect the effects of parasympathetic nerve discharge uh, that their similarity effects produced by these drugs resemble the effect of parasympathetic stimulation here is one classification about the cholinomimetic drugs or the cholinergic agonist or cholinergic drug one the direct acting they have direct effect already given on the muscarinic receptors on the nicotine on your left side muscarinic receptors those drugs which act on muscarine they may be alkaloids well known alkaloids or is a muscarine a muscarine pilocarpin not on pilo pilocarpus muscle you are familiar pilocarpin cholinesters these are four drugs cholinesters uh, you you will be shown later on acetylcholine carbocol bethanicol bethanicol like that and indirect acting cholinergic drugs indirect acting me you inhibit the enzyme cholinase acetylcholinesterase which metabolizes acetylcholine so the effect will be there a well known drug will be taught later on these are the carbamates uh, intermediate to long acting carbamates different carbamate physostigmine is one example physostigmine neostigmine like that another example of indirectly acting is adrophonium rapid to act adrophonium and another example the long acting does these are different classifications very long acting organophosphates you may might have heard about the poisoning by organophosphorus compounds next up to the classification direct acting cholinomimetics does that production similar to that of parasympathetic nervous system by direct action on the cholinergic receptors you know the muscarinic receptors and the nicotinic receptors muscarinic agonists what are muscarinic agonists it means a cholinomimetic drug muscarine you might have heard about muscarine mushroom from obtain from mushroom muscarinic receptor muscarine the muscarinic receptor and as primarily muscarine like a if that alkaloid is i mean given so the what the effects will appear so they are similar 
to the muscarinic effects of cholinergic Nicotinic agonist. What is? What are the nicotinic receptors? The nicotine in small. You know it's one alkaloid in small dose. So at the site where it acts, those the drugs which act on the nicotinic receptors, they are known as nicotinic agonists. A cholinomimetic drug that binds nicotinic receptors and has primarily nicotine-like actions. Must remember that nicotine nicotine like action. You are all familiar about smoking and the effects of nicotine. And if you will be taught about the nicotine later on. The examples of choline esters, choline ester. Vestal choline Methacholine, carbacol, ethanol. Of the acetylcholine, it is rapidly hydrolyzed and it is not selective um, fiber. So, acetylcholine it it loses its uh, clinical application, but very important from uh, this uh, experimental or research point of view. The cholinomimetic alkaloids, we have been told that the muscarine is one obtained from mushroom, pilocarpine obtained natural from pilocarpus jaburindi, but I remember. Sevimilin, then nicotine, nicotine obtained from nicotiana, tabicum, tambaku, you know. Then lobelin, the nicotine and lobelin, they are in liquid form. Note on please. Then veranicline. Veranicline is another drug. It is partial agonist at the nicotinic receptor. So the toxicity of nicotine can be decreased. Or you, I mean, somebody wants to switch off the uh, smoking, so this drug is given to protect that from excessive smoking, veranicolin. After the prototype, again, acetylcholine is the prototype of Then we come to the few lines about the kinetic, pharmacokinetic. Here you see acetylcholine. Spectrum of action is B. It is rapidly hydrolyzed, you have been told, by cholinesterase and very, very short duration, 5 to uh, 30 seconds, and it has poor lipid solubility. So for that reason, clinical application of this drug is almost nil. Then bethanicol. This bethanicol, it is resistant to cholinesterase, and it is orally active. Poor lipid soluble, poor lipid soluble. You know the lipid soluble, they pass through different membranes and uh, easily they, so they have effect on higher center. The duration of action as is they resistant to the cholinesterase, uh, star cholinesterase. So the action is 30 minutes to two hours. Effect of carbacol, it is like bethanicol as a name resemble then pilocarpin. Pilocarpin is not an ester. You have been told it's an alkaloid, a vegetable source, plant source, not as a it has good lipid solubility, so have effect on different body system because because it has good lipid solubility. Duration of action uh, is thirty minutes to two hours. All of you may be familiar with the uh, uh, pupil constricting effect of pilocarpine given in glaucoma. There are also other effects of pilocarpine on the sweat gland, say for xerostomia, xerophthalmia, uh, uh, anhydrosis. So, in these cases, pilocarpine. Then, about the nicotine, is like effect of nicotine is uh, the kinetic is like pilocarpine. Duration of 
action is one to six hour nicotine you know people smoke cigarettes to remain active they have high lipid solubility there is high effect if toxicity appears and one survives safe four hours after nicotine intake so the person will survive because it is also rapidly I mean, <coughs> metabolized excreted from brain viraniclin viraniclin it is partial agonist at and so you know about the partial agonist you have been taught in detail about the partial agonist very very important you should know a few examples of it. viraniclin it is highly lipid soluble and has longer duration of action so for nicotine withdrawal viraniclin is given duration is 12 to 24 hours then different organs and what would be the effect if parasympathetic system is stimulated number one is the eye ocular pharmacology not on eye ocular pharmacology as regards the effect on sphincter muscle of iris uh, you know the circular muscles sphincter muscles of iris there will be pupil constriction these experiment this this experiment you will perform in, in your lab so cholinergic drugs are given and the effect is seen on the uh, rabbit eye not on rabbit eye this is one well known practical so there will be meiosis then effect on the ciliary muscle the there is contraction for near vision accommodation there is effect is uh, there is contraction for near vision then the effects of parasympathomimetic stimulation or the drugs in the heart at the level of sinoatrial node sa node there is decrease in rate if heart rate that goes down it is known as negative chronotropic very important simply chronotropic is not uh, uh, sufficient always say negative or positive chrono means phase so there will be negative chronotropic effect an effect on atria there is decrease in contractile strength and it is the negative inotropic upper one was chronotropic it is negative inotropic so there will be negative in you know, a decrease and decrease and refractory period then at the level of av node in the heart conduction velocity has decreased conduction this is known as negative dromotropic effect negative dromotropic no doubt another terminology is bathmotropic over here is the negative dromotropic so there will be increase in refractive period at the atrial level decrease in refractive period here it is increased then at the level of ventricles these drugs the cholinergic drugs cholinomimetic must direct reaction there is small decrease in contractile strength small decrease so ventricles are not that much affected as the atria they are affected blood vessels blood vessels arteries and veins overall they will dilate as written here it is the edrf what is ed of rf endothelial relaxing factor endothelium derived relaxing factor so now it is related to the release of nitric oxide not on nitric oxide next one in the lung lung not only the muscle you have also considered the bronchial secretion bronchial glands so cholinergic drugs are passing through a field where these organophosphorus compounds they are spread so person is if susceptible to i mean 
he has as met a car ready and he passes through a field which is being separated by organophosphorus compound so asthma may be precipitated in the bronchial muscle there will be contraction bronchoconstriction secretions overall they increase with the cholinergic drugs secretions bronchial gas if the secretion will increase more so there may be breathing problem then effect on the gastrointestinal tract while talking about the GIT phase you have to consider the motility effect on the sphincters effect on the secretion secretions so gut motility will increase gut motility that will increase so if there is atonia say by surgery after surgery or some other reason and there is no contraindication these drugs are given to increase motility then the sphincter they relax and the secretion they increase effects on urinary bladder are usually like those of GIT that detrusor muscle that will contract trigone and sphincter that will relax and th there will be voiding of water voiding of water glands overall you have been told that glands they are stimulated sweat glands salivary glands salivation if there is xeros uh, <coughs> xerostomia you want to increase the salivation pilocarpine is given then lacrimation uh, lacrimal gland they are stimulated so more tears will be there the nasopharyngeal gland so the secretion will increase then effect on the cns these drugs are the cholinergic drugs they have or the acetylcholine there is initial stimulation and followed by depression mood is elevated initially there is alertness but in certain condition there may be addiction and even with high doses of sartra there may be conversion that high doses conversion that high doses and effects on the skeletal muscle already discussed if over stimulation due to these drugs called energetic drugs there may be fasciculation and spasm prolonged activation may be paralysis paralysis you will study it later on paralysis while going through the neuromuscular blockers non depolarizing neuromuscular blocker polarizing depolarizing then effect on the autonomic ganglia it depends on the autonomic innervation of the organ in world autonomic ganglia you have been told in the autonomic ganglia there are nicotinic receptors and in the adrenal medulla uh, you know it's a uh, uh, adrenal medulla it is an one uh, adrenal medulla it's a sort of sympathetic gland so increase release of adrenal adrenal medulla at adrenal medulla there are nicotinic receptors and there is a release of adrenal adrenal so adrenergic effects will also be there while well, these are dumbbells one given over dumbbells so the common symptom signs are diarrhea with cholinergic stimulation urination meiosis bradycardia bronchoconstriction to just the already given literature excitation msa lacrimation salivation sweating while going through the previous slide you can easily then clinical indications where these drugs are used about the bethanical you you have been uh, told that uh, in case of post operative abdominal distension or there is paralytic ileus or for some reason there is gastric atonia then bethanical is effective 
normally given another drug that is acetylcholine anticholinesterase that is neostigmine is given you will study that onward then bethanical another indication given over post operative urinary retention myogenic neurogenic blood their indication in the urinary system then about the pallocarpine and carbecal pallocarpine is well known for its effect in the and the in the raised intraocular pressure that is glaucoma and they are also used for meiosis induction of meiosis and also carbocal during after surgery and sevimilin and pilocarpin jogden syndrome there is dryness of mouth xerostomia as sialaga pilocarpin is effective so there is there is dryness of mouth here is another indication given over of methacholine to diagnose of bronchial airway hyperactivity bronchial which is diagnostic application methacholine may be even dangerous vernicoline as you know it's a long acting drug so the smoking to withdraw smoking it is used vernic acetylcholine not used therapeutically why it is non selective and very brief few words about pilocarpin pilocarpus microphylis right over here. what i have read earlier pilocarpus jaburandi uses again given for glaucoma over here mind it may be open or closed angle both in both condition it is here. then another indication of pilocarpin if there is mitriacid due to atropine one anticholinergic atropine very common you will study it in detail to break adhesions of virus with lens if there are adhesions with lens or cornea by alternating it with mediatic mediatic and meiotic they are given side by side to break the adhesions then xerostomia dryness of mouth xerophthalmia xerophytes you might have heard about xerophytes prawns adverse effects of cholinergic drug cn stimulation meiosis cyclospor then lacrimation bronchoconstriction transient bradycardia may be followed by depressed tachycardia sweating salivation nausea vomiting diarrhea urinary urgency these are already discussed nicotinic toxicity if say high doses of nicotine they are uh, accidentally taken or taken as poison so there will this toxicity you will also study in your forensic medicine acute toxicity there will be stimulation cna stimulation so there may be convulsions and these convulsions may progress to coma and respiratory rest and then at the level of skeletal muscle you know nicotine receptors are there there will be depolarization and prolonged depolarization it may result in blocked and respiratory paralysis then the nicotine effects you have been told that at adrenal level and so epinephrine is really so hypertension may be there and cardiac arrhythmias may be there and treatment given is symptomatically for muscarinic over stimulation atropine and otherwise for convulsion diazepam if the this respiration is i mean effect is a mechanical ventilation is indicated chronic toxicity i mean people smoke for years so it may result in and bronchitis chronic bronchitis emphysema 
IHD is very common because of excessive smoking. In the young age, it is more hazardous and very, I mean, disturbing at present because of heavy smoking by youngsters. So the heart problems are even there at the age of 25 to 35. Then in the periphery blood vessel, they will constrict there will be peripheral vascular disease. Then if there is peptic ulcer or oral ulcers are there, they are precipitated. So to avoid this chronic toxicity, how you will tackle with it, you have to give nicotinic um, patches or viraniclin. Well, after that, about the questions, I suggest a uh, and it is again shown, uh, so you go through this picture, draw it with your hand, so that you let it be in your mind. These are MCQs, you will study yourself and will make a answer in your assignment. MCQ 2, MCQ 3, MCQ 4. Thanks to Dr. Racha. Uh, she was on it, a well-known teacher of your college, so expert in designing these <coughs> slides for Thank you very much. Here I close it over here.